The savannah biome is a tropical and subtropical grassland containing an abundance of grasses with trees and shrubs scattered amongst the beautiful plains. The savannah is most notably known for providing habitats for some of Earth's most prized animals, such as lions and elephants. When most people think of savannah, they think of the beautiful African wilderness, seen in many wildlife documentaries that highlight the magnificent array of animals that are found here. This is true, but savannah is not only found in Africa. It can be found in other regions of Earth, such as Central and South America and Northern Australia. All these different regions share one common denominator, which is that they are found upon grasses which provide the basis for all life to grow from. The savannah biome can be found between 10 and 20 degrees north and south, mainly located within the tropics of Cancer and the tropics of Capricorn. This biome experiences warm temperatures all year round due to its close proximity to the equator. Due to this close proximity, there are equal hours of sunlight throughout the year. The savannah biome is often regarded as a transitional biome between the dry deserts and the flourishing forests. This is because savannas lie somewhere in the middle in terms of tree cover between these two biomes. Savannas can have very little tree cover and be very open and exposed, or they can have loads of tree cover where it merges into forests. Unlike most regions, which have four distinct seasons, the savannah biome only has two, and the classification of these are determined by the levels of precipitation. The dry season, which is the winter, lasts for up to five months, and it can receive as little as 100 millimetres of rain. During this season, the landscape turns brown as the grasses dry out, making life tough for the animals, which struggle to find food and water. Trees often drop their leaves to help with storing what little water is available. The wet season brings a rapid spell of growth to the vegetation. This season can last for up to seven months and it can receive between 500 to 1200 millimetres of rain. Water sources are plentiful and nutritious vegetation are abundant, making life relatively easy for the herbivores. Except, of course, the threat of hungry predators. Throughout the year, temperatures lie consistently between 20 and 35 degrees Celsius. The dry season is only slightly cooler than the wet season by a few degrees. As I mentioned earlier, savannah is found on a range of continents across the globe, and typically three main types can be defined, African, Australian and American. I think you would all agree when I say that Africa is the most well-known region on Earth for having this type of biome. In fact, this biome alone covers half of the continent of Africa. These vast interconnected plains provide enormous habitats for many species to live and allow for the greatest mammal migrations on Earth. The Great Migration, which occurs partly in the Serengeti National Park, features millions of wildebeest, zebras and other ungulates that migrate in herds stretching up to 35 miles long, with their newly born calves from the southern end to the northern end in search of greener pastures to feed on. The African savannah has so much connectivity between all kinds of species, which each have their own role in the ecosystem, but still interact with each other in one form or another. From the lions and hyenas spying on the migrating herbivores, to the airborne scavengers such as vultures, that scour the skies in search of a fresh carcass. The African wilderness supports a wide variety of species, from hoofed mammals to top predators. Some of these species include Earth's largest living land mammal, the African elephant, as well as lions, cheetahs, hyenas, African wild dogs, zebras, buffaloes, impalas, giraffes, gazelles, hippos, rhinos, meerkats, ostriches, vultures, and so many more. Nowhere else on Earth can we find such a large concentration of mammals, some of which are endangered and cannot be found anywhere else on Earth. Amongst the African plains lie the famous flat-topped acacia trees. These are common amongst the savannah, along with burbab trees. The acacia tree is very phytic, so it's adapted to living in a dry and hot environment. They have small waxy leaves which help to prevent water loss, as well as long far-reaching roots that allow them to source as much water as possible. Acacia trees defend themselves against herbivores by containing sharp thorns on their surface, which deter many herbivores from eating them. This doesn't stop the giraffes though, which are the reason acacia trees have this unique flat top look. Acacias pump alkalines into their leaves when giraffes start eating on them. The more they eat, the more unappealing it tastes, until the giraffes will simply stop eating them. The acacias have developed this incredible adaptation of sending chemical signals in the air to alert other acacias or nearby predators. This allows other acacias to start stimulating the production of alkalines into the leaves. Boabab trees have a thick trunk to store large amounts of water to use when it's needed most. However, elephants have developed ways of tearing through the trunk 
to find water during the desperate dry season. Acacias dominate in the east, whereas baobabs tend to appear in the southern regions and within Madagascar. The trees here survive the harsh dry season by dropping their leaves. They are an important food source for many animals providing items such as wood, leaves, flowers and seeds. They don't form a canopy allowing sunlight to reach through and hit the ground layer full of perennial grasses such as blue stem and thatching. The exposed landscape of the savannah can leave animals vulnerable to attack. The trees provide some form of protection and shelter from the weather and nearby predators. Many animals directly inhibit the growth of trees in this biome. They often consume saplings of trees which prevent them from growing into adult trees. However, a reason why a small number of trees do grow in this biome is partly down to animals such as elephants. Elephants ingest tree seeds which then release in their dung and helps to aid in the dispersal of seeds. Two major adaptations of animals in this biome both contradict each other and balance out the battle between predators and prey. For example, cheetahs are remarkably fast and so they use their speed to chase down prey. However, herbivores such as zebras and wildebeest have adapted to form large herds which outnumber and outcompete a pack of cheetahs. In order for a kill to occur, a pack of cheetahs will have to isolate an individual and separate it from its herd in order to stand a chance of getting a meal. Some individuals of the herd look out for oncoming danger, whilst the others graze in the grass. Many herding species also have scent glands on their hooves, which helps for lost individuals to find their way back to the herd. The two lesser known forms of savannah, Australian and American, are relatively similar, except for a few major differences. Australian savannah is dominated by eucalyptus trees. Just below them, spinifex and kangaroo grasses dominate the plains. Savannah grasslands in Australia are located within the northern region of the country, stretching from east to west. The grasslands are bound by the large Australian deserts to the south. In Australia, the winter is from May to October, with average temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius. In the summer months from October to March, the temperatures lie within the 30s. In the wet season, levels of rainfall can be anywhere from 200 to 450 millimetres, whereas the precipitation levels won't exceed 100 millimetres in the dry season. It's no surprise that as well as the African savannah, the diversity of species is also high in Australia too. The most notable animals that can be seen here are kangaroos, dingoes, blue tongue skinks, wallabies, possums, kookaburras and of course koalas. Some of these animals littered are marsupials, which give birth to their young that are undeveloped. These often stay close to trees for shelter, safety and food. It's hard to forget the world's largest living reptile, the saltwater crocodile, which also lives within the savannah's rivers and lakes. In the Americas, the most common plants are locust berry and baudicea, while the ground is covered with cut and bahia grass. The animals that are suited to the American savannas include hares, jaguars, pumas and many others. Apart from the species makeup and their location, they are relatively similar to the Australian savannah. The savannah biome is often overlooked in terms of conservation and management compared to other biomes such as tropical rainforests. Due to relatively flat profile of savannas, they are often converted into agriculture land for the growing of livestock and crops. As I mentioned earlier, this biome contains high levels of biodiversity that are not seen in most regions on earth. Part of this biodiversity is from the large megafauna that inhabit the open grasslands. Due to the rarity and profitability of their parts, they are widely hunted and poached for their tusks, skin and fur. This is of growing concern and is one of the main destroyers of this ecosystem and the global biodiversity. This is why many of the species here are classed as endangered or vulnerable. Many conservation initiatives aim to monitor individuals at high risk and patrol areas on the lookout for poachers. It is believed that poachers kill an estimated 150,000 wildebeest a year. This has cascading effects on the predators that prey on wildebeest and the vegetation that wildebeest consume. Furthermore, the savannah biome is one that has regular outbreaks of fire. Fire isn't all bad. It removes the dead decaying vegetation so new vegetation can grow. Many of the organisms in this biome have adapted greatly to the common fires. However, with climate change increasing in intensity, the savannah will not only get warmer, but drier too. When the grass dries up, it becomes highly flammable. Lightning occurs before the wet season and ignites the grass. The longer dry seasons cause a greater chance for fire to occur. The increase in fires will have a disastrous impact on the biome, killing a large amount of healthy vegetation and destroying the habitats of the many species that inhabit this biome. 
This will cause populations of the species to decline severely, affecting the levels of species abundance in this biome. Eucalyptus trees are harvested widely for cosmetic use. They have been deforested in this biome for their timber, which is removing essential habitats that many animals rely on to survive. Many invasive weeds and pests have been brought into the savannah and are threatening the survival and existence of many native species. As we all know, agriculture destroys habitats and makes land hostile for organisms to live on. However, some farming practices are better than others and lessen the burden on the land. Local tribes such as the Maasai tribe now practice nomadic farming. This is a form of farming where they change the land that they farm routinely. This allows for areas that have been farmed to regrow and become habitable for species to live on. Furthermore, due to the incredible levels of diversity and endemic species located within the savannah, they are often designated as national parks, nature reserves or game reserves to protect the flora and fauna of a certain area and so continuous stretches of land can be kept to enable species to roam the plains freely, uninterrupted by agriculture or urbanisation. Some of these national parks include Serengeti and Kruger National Park. This concludes our video on the beautiful Savannah biome. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it would be great if you could give us a like and subscribe for more nature content.